This is FRM Part 1, Book 1, Foundations of Risk Management, and this is Chapter 13, Code of Conduct. Let's get right into the learning objectives. There are only two of them, but they are important ones. Describe the responsibility of each member with respect to a wide range of opportunities. Professional integrity, ethical conduct, conflicts of interest, confidentiality, and adherence to generally accepted practices and risk management. And then, and then describe the potential consequences of violating the terms that are going to be outlined uh, in the next couple of slides. Let's start with an introduction. Um, what GARP does is set forth principles of professional conduct for the members of GARP, those who have earned the financial risk management designation or the energy risk professional certification, other GARP certification and diploma holders, plus, plus all the candidates, GARP's board, its regional directors and committee members. And the idea, the idea is that these principles are going to promote the highest levels of ethical conduct. In addition, it'll provide direction and support for individuals and firms who are in the risk management profession. Now, the pursuit of these high ethical standards goes beyond just following the rules. You know, like we have a decision and we're saying, okay, here's the ethical standard, I have to meet the ethical standard. But what, what GARP is hoping for, what they're trying to promote, is the pursuit of a universal ethical culture so that every decision, every background research, every piece of information that is going to be made available to colleagues or to clients, that it is done with the highest ethical process. All individuals, firms, and associations should have a high ethical character. And note that when firms are making these decisions, when individuals are making these decisions, that they should also involve the ethical considerations in addition to all the other stuff that goes in to being a good financial risk manager. I mean, let's face it, as a good financial risk manager, you're gonna be doing things like evaluating risk and assessing risk and producing risk reports and quantifying risk using value at risk or beta or standard deviation or some or some other metric. Um, you're going to be um, producing risk budgets and probably provide inputs to budgets that affect other parts of the firm. So the important thing here is that th to understand that there's no really single prescriptive ethical standard. Rather, it's a continuous process so that the ethics just become part of the core, the base of the financial risk manager. Now, what, what good financial risk managers must do is understand that this ethical behavior must weigh the circumstances and the culture of this applicable global community. Because after all, you know, we don't live in silos, right? We talked about risk management under silos and how problematic that can be. But as financial risk managers, you know, we might have our own little firm, but we don't live in a silo. So we need to be aware of what's going on outside of the world. All right, this code is comprised of principles and professional standards and rules of conduct, which all GARP members agree to uphold and implement. Before I get started in, in the principles, you guys know I like to give sports analogies and movie analogies. How about if I give you a, a television show analogy? Do you remember on Seinfeld when George got a job because he put on his resume that he was a risk manager and he had a textbook that had risk management on it? And Jerry said, what do you know about risk management? And George looked at him like, of course, I know nothing about it. And Jerry said, how did they hire you? And George said, it may have been on my resume. You know, I thought this was really funny. And of course, what we're trying to do is act just the opposite of the way George did on this episode. So look at this first principle, honesty, integrity, and competence. Uh, George failed in, in all of those here. So let's go through these individually. So when I think of um, acting with honesty, I always think of making decisions when I was a little boy with my parents watching me. You know, I'm always going to make the right decision. I'm going to make the honest and the truthful decision. You know, wasn't there some leader who said something like, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down the 
apple tree or peach tree, whatever it was. I think that's kind of a legend anyway. Integrity. Integrity has everything to do with being able to balance. You guys know I've done this before. So there are marginal costs and marginal benefits to every decision. But from an ethical standpoint, what we've got to consider is what do the laws and the rules and these principles tell us? Marginal costs and marginal benefit and that we're going to make decisions. We're going to pursue these opportunities with the highest level of integrity. And then competence, of course, part of this, this is really cool stuff. You guys are fulfilling this part of it. Competence meaning to be able to understand all of the risk management principles. But the interesting thing about these principles is that, you know, we can be honest today. We can have high levels of integrity today and we can be com competent today. But I promise you that in five or 10 years, you, you might still be honest. You might still have integrity. Hopefully you do, but you'll be much more competent in five years after five years of experience. No doubt about that. How about conflicts of interest? All right, so we have a responsibility as GARP members to promote the interest of all relevant constituencies, all right, and will not knowingly perform risk management service directly or indirectly involving an actual or potential conflict of interest. All right, so we're going to have all these responsibilities to our employer, let's say a financial institution, maybe to the stakeholders of that financial institution, which is going to include the depositors and the shareholders and the bondholders, of course, and all of those who read our risk management reports. So we need to make certain, we need to make certain that if we make a recommendation for uh, a particular investment, that there's no potential conflict of interest. Like, oh, by the way, my husband or wife owns 25,000 shares of this company and I'm going to give it a buy recommendation based on all of these risk metrics that I have come up with. Now, of course, the other side of this is that um, if there is any kind of a sense of a potential conflict of interest, there's got to be full, full and complete disclosure. Confidentiality, this makes perfect sense. Um, data, information that we gather, not just from constituents or clients or colleagues. We need to make sure that that's held highly confidential. Didn't I just read in the paper that some social media uh, company made 600 million uh, passwords available to all the people that work there? I don't know. So we need to make certain that we take reasonable precautionary members measures, I'm sorry, to prevent intentional and unintentional disclosures of confidential information or data. All right, professional standards. So we have these fundamental responsibilities. We need to endeavor and encourage others to operate at the highest level of professional skill, which means we have to scan the landscape. We need to scan the environment and so that we can observe professional behavior over here and, per, and observe it over here and, of course, observe it above it and below us as well. Members should always continue to perfect their expertise. I mean, this is part of what you guys are doing right now, trying to become more competent in this area and become experts. And remember, and remember, nobody ever expects you to know everything. This is one of the great things that I've learned as I've gotten older. Nobody expects you, but they expect you to be able to figure it out. And so that's the kind of a skill set that we're trying to give you here during this whole process. Uh, best practices. So GART members, members will promote and adhere to applicable best practice standards. This makes perfect sense. They must recognize that risk management does not exist in a vacuum. So here's our vacuum, you know, and inside of that vacuum, we've got a bunch of stuff going on. But of course, we have to scan the environment. We need to make sure that the decisions that we make and the correlations that our decisions have with other vacuums over there are well known and established. Communications have to be clear and appropriate to the circumstance and professional and their intended audience, and they have to satisfy the applicable standards of conduct. All right, how about the rules of conduct here? So professional integrity and ethical conduct. So uh, members shall act professionally, ethically, and with integrity in all dealings with employers and all these different kinds of stakeholders. 
exercise reasonable judgment in the provision of risk services. Of course, sometimes uh, standard deviation is going to be appropriate, sometimes beta, sometimes semivariant, sometimes value at risk, sometimes some, some other measure out there is going to be appropriate. And so, of course, as good financial risk managers, we have to exercise reasonable judgment to try to figure out which one of those applies to the appropriate decision that either we're making or a supervisor is making. Ah, oh, here we go. This is important. This goes back to, you know, of course, this is the big umbrella of integrity, but uh, this is uh, ethics as well. GARP members must not offer, solicit, or accept any gift, benefit, compensation, or consideration that could reasonably expect it to compromise their own or another's independence and objectivity. Of course, as a good financial risk manager, you're going to provide a service, and so you're going to get compensated for it. And there are reasonable measures of comp compensation that are out there, and most people know what those reasonable measures are. But if some potential client says, hey, I'll hire you to put forth this risk management uh, report, and if, in fact, you slant it in our favor or a particular bias, I'll let you have tickets to some rock and roll concert that's playing right down the street or something. So we need to make sure that we avoid uh, even the appearance of a conflict of interest. Members must take reasonable precautions to ensure that the services are not used for improper, fraudulent, or illegal purposes. Let's go back to my favorite movie example. You guys ever see that 1985, I think, movie, uh, Midnight Run, where the bounty hunter has to get the guy who was an accountant for the mob? Of course, we need to make sure, we need to make sure that reasonable precautions are taken so that we're not... Um, helping out or providing a fraudulent or improper or illegal purposes. Of course, we're not going to do any kinds of misrepresentation knowingly, right? Knowingly, this, this swings back to our expertise. Members shall not engage in professional conduct involving dishonesty or deception. They shall not compromise the integrity of the designation or of GARP itself. And they shall be mindful of con cultural differences regarding ethical behavior and customs. And if there is a conflict between uh, these rules of conduct or the principles and local cultural rules or laws, then the GARP member always should seek to apply the higher standard. That should make perfect sense. Conflicts of interest, act fairly in all situations, fully disclose actual or potential conflicts of interest, full and fair disclosure. What this does is this makes certain that we're going to be able to be independent and objective. And let, let's face it, you know, the one thing that I love about, you know, this risk management and financial risk management is that when you use something like uh, standard deviation. You know, this is math, right? You can't argue with the math. It's, that's what it is. It's math. And so the math tells you it helps. It's one of the inputs, but there's artistry as well. So you got to figure out your experience and how to apply this to each scenario, but you've got to be independent and objective. Of course, confidentiality of their work. We talked about that before. Fundamental responsibilities. So we need to comply with all the laws, the rules, and regulations, in, including this code. We're going to have ethical responsibilities. We're going to understand the needs and complexity of the employer or the client. Be diligent. You know, that word diligent always means that we're going to, we're going to work hard. You know, so that's what we're going to do. We have this assignment. We're going to produce a report and we're going to work hard. Now, that doesn't mean like getting out the shovel and the and the gloves and getting blisters on our hands because we're working physically, but our brains need to work physically. So perhaps, you know, maybe we get blisters on our brains. I'm not sure that that's possible. Notice my final circle point there. Clearly disclose the relevant limits of their specific knowledge. This is what I was talking about earlier. Um, I love being able to answer a question uh, to my students or to anybody else when I say, you know what, I don't know the answer to that question, but let me get right back to you. And it's a challenge. How quickly can I get back to find out what that answer is? 
All right, general accepted practices. Members shall execute all serv services with diligence that is independent, right? Should be, shall be familiar with general accepted risk management practices. Ah, we're going to communicate with factual data and we're not going to contain any false information. And this is an important one here, the last circle point. Distinguish between fact and opinion when we present our results in a report. Now, every GARP member should know and abide by this code. Um, they should know local laws and regulation and abide by those as well. Um, where the local requirements conflict with the code, such requirements will have precedence. That makes perfect sense. And so what can happen if we violate the code? Temporary suspension, permanent removal of the membership, And that takes us to the end. Look at that. There's book one. Next up is book two, quantitative analysis. Sounds like we're going to need our calculators for that.